Our idea is, you know, to have an interactive art experience and as you look at it and say, why can't I change the world as well? Why can't I do that? And that's what we are hoping. We've created mind maps, just written down everything, kind of separated it into different eras, different timelines. So I get a sketch and convert it into the Photoshop version by taking photos of different images, meshing together all kinds of different things into one window, a panel. Once we have that design the way that we like it, we go through with Illustrator and create lead lines and, and, and piece out the glass that we'd like to and take them into the painting room where all of our artists, we can, we can sit down and paint the image that needs to go in those pieces. We have light tables that we can see the window without putting it together. We'll go through and, and, and tweak that and then we just build it and, and put the lead around each piece and put it together. As Tom and Cameron and the other artists at Holdman Studios were working on these windows, they would give us a concept art drawing, and they would then get feedback from the scholars on the team about things that might be missing, things that needed to be changed, were they inaccurate, and so we would give them feedback on the developing the concept of each window. There's a tremendous richness to all of the panels that Tom has developed. One that I feel a particular affection for is the panel that covers the late 1700s. Of course, uh, central to the frame then is the signing of the Declaration of Independence. There's a famous moment uh, at the end of the Constitutional Convention where Ben Franklin looks up and they've got the draft of the document there that they're ready to ratify. And uh, George Washington, who'd been uh, stoically presiding over the proceedings, was sitting on a chair that had a sun in the, uh, on the top arc of the chair. And Ben Franklin famously said, I've been watching the, the back of that chair this whole proceedings, and I've wondered, is that a setting sun or a rising sun? And today, with the work that we have produced, and as I look to the future, I'm absolutely convinced that the symbol is that of a rising sun. So I told that story to Tom. He loved the story, and he said, you know, we've got this uh, famous image of Ben Franklin sitting at the drafting table of the Declaration of Independence. Well, that's not exactly where the, where the chair was, but he's worked the chair in. It's got the rising symbol sun in it. It's not pure history. It's artistic, creative history but it's got the details that I think will interest students, but it goes well beyond uh, the Founding Fathers. So we have uh, an image of the fourth emperor of the Qing Dynasty, Kangxi. We have a Japanese incense burner from the Edo period. There's an image of Mary Wollstonecraft, a famed Enlightenment feminist uh, figure and philosopher. There's something there to engage almost every mind and subject of interest. Roots of Knowledge is nothing less than an attempt to highlight the most important advances in human understanding from all over the world. Little wonder then that we started getting international attention with invitations to pack up and ship some of the windows to places like New York, Oxford, and London. General Society was founded in 1785 by the skilled craftsmen of New York City, artisans who represented 22 different trades. The Society is also home to our Locke Museum, which is currently housing the exquisite stained glass exhibit, Roots of Knowledge. We hosted over 400 people who came to see the exhibit here in New York City and I enjoyed standing by to hear people's reactions. Of course, very discerning New Yorkers that would approach it kind of curiously, you know, but by the end of it, people were turning to each other. You know we're going to have to buy plane tickets to Utah Valley now to see the rest of this exhibit. Visitors have just been astonished. They literally stop in their tracks and then immediately they're drawn in to the details. All of us, as Tom Holdman says, speak different languages, but there really is a universal language in art. Welcome to Christ Church, established in 1546. We have the opportunity here to, to see 
for one day between New York City and London, these panels of stained glass. Well, I think it's a phenomenal project. Um, clearly, there's a, an enormous amount of work and a lot of thought gone into it. I think it's truly inspirational. The wealth of detail which you can see is just amazing. If you look in every corner of the, of the image, you can find extraordinary scenes, people, things going on, you've no idea what it is and you just want to go and look closely to find out what on earth it is. It's comparable to the great schemes of medieval glass in the great cathedrals. And as I said to Tom earlier when he says, oh, it took 12 long years, well, in the Middle Ages it would take somewhere between 25 and 50 years. So I think he did really well. It's one of those things I think you'll have to come back and look at several times, if not, you know, continually really to fully appreciate it. It's, it's too much of a bite in one go, I think, to, to take in. We have tonight a beautiful, very special array of art here inside the hall. We are extremely honoured tonight that the Holden Studios from the US have brought an example of their roots of knowledge. It's a major stained glass piece of work destined for the Utah Valley University Library and it's extraordinary imaginary images to depict humanity's contributions to the pursuit of knowledge throughout recorded history. It's really exciting because it combines really traditional techniques that have been practiced since the medieval period, uh, painting on coloured glass and leaded together, with also new materials and I've noticed various parts in the window which kind of hark back to the American opalescent glass that people like Tiffany uh, made famous in the 19th century and still very popular in America and across the world today. My specialism is particularly in stained glass of the 19th century and I think that's partly why I responded so well to this project because the ambition um, is certainly on a, a, a scale that hasn't been tackled really I think since that period if I can say that and hopefully haven't offended all contemporary artists. We have a number of renowned stained glass artists from the UK here at the Art Fair and it's been wonderful to see them over the past few days coming in here and actually looking at the work of a fellow stained glass artist and it's a great homage to um, Holdman Studios that stained glass artists will peer review the work and consider its, its beauty. I would say this is the biggest project which is contemporary I have experienced through my naked eyes. So I, I find that is, I think this is a historical project. The City of London is 2,000 years old. I don't think it's seen anything like this before. <laughs> so it's hugely exciting. And the university I know will cherish it, love it. And of course it will bring it right back to its original roots here. So it's a right hands across the seas exercise this. And my goodness, a thing of beauty. And a thing of beauty is going to be cherished forever. What thrills me most about these windows is that not only are they a brilliant manifestation of engaged learning, they are a powerful reflection of all of UVU's core themes. As one Oxford scholar put it when he saw several of the windows which had been on display at a public event at Christ Church College, this is brilliant. Students will stand there staring at these windows. It will get them excited and then they will turn around 180 degrees and march right up into the library to start learning more. We believe this will happen, and we believe it will happen for students of all ages. The Roots of Knowledge windows are only sitting here behind these curtains today because a number of remarkable individuals recognized the beauty, the grandeur, and the potential of this project, and then they did something about it. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a note of thanks to so much support from so many outstanding individuals today. Okay, uh, the audience want to help us with a countdown? Five, four, three, two, one.